Okay, so in this third video on unemployment, uh, we're going to spend a few minutes looking at whether automation uh, will cause higher unemployment in the future. How strong is the threat of technological unemployment? Automation anxiety is something the media talk about, and that's, ex that's existed for, for many, many years. Um, that state of anxiety is that uh, new technologies will reduce the number of jobs that are available. Uh, economists give a, a concept called technological unemployment, and that is when a labour-saving bit of kit or machinery is introduced into the productive process, and that allows firms to replace labour with capital technology. So self-scanning machines in supermarkets or high high intensity cameras which might replace security guards, etc. That could be called technological unemployment. Here's a quick quiz question for you. Which country has the highest density of robot workers in the world? Press the pause button, have a think. Which country has the highest density of robot workers in the world? Just press play when you want to crack on. Well, the answer is South Korea, according to the data for 2017. Uh, now, of course, the figures may well have increased since then, uh, but uh, taking an average of uh, the number of industrial robots per one for per 10,000 employees. Globally, the average was 85. In South Korea, they had 710 installed industrial robots per 10,000 employees. Uh, Singapore came second. Germany and Japan a little bit way back there. Uh, notice that the United Kingdom, the UK, doesn't even appear on this chart. And uh, Japan um, uh, is, is actually not as high up as I thought it would be, given that it's one of the major manufacturers of industrial robots. I think they account for some of that half of the world supply. So South Korea is ahead of the game in terms of industrial robots used in manufacturing. And this chart shows the worldwide shipments of industrial robots from 2004 all the way through to 2018. Notice that steep increase, particularly from the mid part of, of the last decade onwards. So things like car manufacturing uh, are good examples, food and beverage production, um, robots used in warehouses and things. You've probably seen the videos, some great videos on YouTube, a huge increase in the number of robot uh, sales globally, nearly 400,000 in 2017 and 2018. So uh, we, we're aware of this. Uh, robots are set to have a big impact on workforces across the world particularly in advanced countries, but maybe increasingly in emerging developing countries as well. So which jobs are at risk? Well, this research from Boston Consulting Group, or BCG, was a survey of executives and managers from over a thousand global companies. And this was a survey done just a little over a year ago. And the research found that nearly two thirds of Chinese companies are expecting a fall in the number of employees due to automation. 60% in Poland, over 50% in Japan. A uh, smaller percentage in countries such as France, Italy and India, where just about 40% of uh, managers expected a fall in employment. Is there going to be a fall in employment or can ro robots create more jobs than they destroy? One idea that economists have is to talk about the difference between a substitution effect and a complementary effect. I thought I'd just explain the two for you in this Head Start video, uh, giving an example. So robots uh, can have substitution effects, and that is where a new technology replaces an existing job. So think about film projectionists in the cine world or view cinema. It's nearly all now digitised. Think about supermarket checkout workers, people, are, people in factory employment now replaced by, by robots. Yes, Automation, robotics can replace, can substitute workers and therefore create unemployment. On the other hand, there can also be complementary effects, increasing employment. Um, robots can free up resources by making people more productive. Architects now routinely use computer-aided design. And, and somebody's got to make the robots, somebody's got to maintain them, somebody's got to develop the software for the robots, somebody's got to install them in, in, uh, in their environment. So making this distinction between a substitution and a complementary effect is quite an interesting distinction to make. The Deloitte Monday Briefing, 
written by Ian Stewart and his team is, a, is an absolutely superb publication for Head Start, Year 11 students taking economics in the sixth form. And I just wanted to point you to this brilliant article. I've linked to it and I'll put it in the comments section of the video from a couple of years ago, June 2018. Ian Stewart and his team saying that technology and new ideas have been destroying and creating jobs for centuries. Ian, I think his glass is half full here. Technology is not the main destroyer of jobs, recessions, competition, bad decisions, etc. Wipe out far more jobs. Less obvious are the channels through which technology creates more and better jobs. App designers, software engineers, and so on. So automation won't necessarily lead to fewer jobs because new tasks and new jobs will appear. But of course, those jobs may require a very different set of skills. Economists call that human capital. Uh, so that uh, links back to our second video on structural unemployment. It's vital for students, people across the age ranges to have good education, good training to limit the downside effects of automation in the future. And I think a great research idea for you during the summer uh, would be to perhaps think of some industries that you're interested in where robots, artificial intelligence are having an effect on employment and perhaps do a bit of research uh, on the extent to which total employment is going up or down as capital, uh, capital intensity increases. There we go. That's the end of our third video on unemployment. We've looked at some of the causes. Uh, we've looked at the risk of depression in the world economy. We have looked at structural unemployment, the problem of youth unemployment. And in our third video, we've just spent a few minutes thinking about automation and future jobs. And I hope the three videos together give you a good introduction to one of the big topics, the big macro issues that, uh, that economists look at in their A-levels. OK, thank you.